treatments. Having completed these three preliminary questions, the physical examination begins. Item four in the AIMS examination requires the patient to sit up straight in the chair with their hands resting on each knee. The legs should be slightly apart, four to six inches, with both feet flat on the floor. The examiner should look at the entire body for movements while the patient is in this position. Pay particular attention to the patient's face, hands, and feet. Item five instructs the patient to sit with their hands hanging unsupported. This may be accomplished by hanging the arms down between the legs or by dropping both arms at the sides unsupported. To achieve the full benefit of this maneuver, the use of a chair without arms is very important. Movements may be noted in the hands and fingers at this time, but do not forget to check all seven body areas for other subtle movements. Item six of the examination requires the patient to open their mouth for approximately 10 seconds. This procedure should be done twice. The examiner is looking for movements of the tongue. These are writhing, worm-like movements. Pay close attention. Tongue movements are often some of the earliest signs of tardive dyskinesia. That is why this portion of the examination is done twice. Patients with more advanced involuntary movements may have twisting or darting tongue movements. Pay particular attention to whether the tongue extends beyond the teeth. Item seven also involves the mouth. The patient is instructed to stick out their tongue for approximately 10 seconds. Because the tongue is often the earliest indicator of tardive dyskinesia, this procedure is also done twice. As with the previous instruction, the examiner is watching for abnormal tongue movements, but do not forget to monitor the rest of the body. Instruction eight of the Ames examination has the patient tap their thumb with each finger as rapidly as possible for 10 to 15 seconds. Do one hand at a time. The primary purpose of this exercise is to distract the patient. Due to the concentration required to perform the exercise, previously suppressed movements will frequently appear. The examiner should not be concerned with how well the finger tapping is performed, but instead should look for any facial or leg movements precipitated by this exercise. Do not score mirror image movements of the opposite hand. Please note, item eight is often referred to as one of the activated movements. Some examiners score this portion differently. This scoring variation will be discussed in a few minutes. Item nine requires the examiner to flex and extend the patient's left and right arms one at a time. Any rigidity should be noted. Unfortunately, Parkinson's disease and tardive dyskinesia frequently coexist. This presents a problem. The Parkinsonian rigidity may partly or completely mask dyskinesias. For this reason, it is important to document its presence. Please note this rigidity is not formally scored as part of the AIMS examination. It is only documented.